morning. And morning to all of you guys out there. Yeah, you see those little white things on the black jacket? You know what that means. Yeah. We're starting to see it a little bit. Supposed to get a little bit of white stuff here today. The wind is up a little bit. It's just going to be one of them days. I, uh, I need to go up north and pick up a couple bundles of slabs from a buddy up there that cuts wood. But he's in the bush cutting trees down, cutting logs today. So, we're not going up there today. So, I guess it might be a play in the shop kind of day. Anywho, got a couple things to do at the barn here, and I'll see what happens after that. Talk to you later. Alrighty, guys, see you in the mirror? Yeah. We're hooked up to the little trailer. Yeah. Not so scruffy today. We're hooked up to the 24 foot deck over and uh, slight change of plans. Was going to work in the shop, but got the phone call that slight change of plans at our lumber supplier shop two and a half hours away. For him also, he's, he's going to be in his yard, so he's not going to be in the forest. So we're going to head up there and grab our slabs today, uh, our windbreak boards. This theoretically should be the last uh, parts or supply road trip of any distance like this. I'm not saying there won't be more road trips in the future. I'm saying this should be the last road trip for supplies and or parts for us. Theoretically, I don't see anything in the future, but who the hell knows, right? Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. We're going to hit the highway here shortly, and we'll talk to you all later. Well, there you go, guys. Went up to, went for a two and a half hour drive one way, and picked up three bundles of uh, slabs, wind boards. They're basically one inch boards. Some of them are really nice square cut. Some of them are, a majority are, I think they call these seconds. So bark on the edge. But we got three lifts. Top dog lumber out of uh, Archerwell, Sask area. Uh, Scott Sealstead owner operator so uh yeah uh if you this is the second or third time that i've gotten wind boards out of scott so oh shit excuse me anyways i'm gonna let you guys go we'll see what happens tomorrow hey guys how's it going today uh what are we doing gate building custom gate building the hole is nine well the way the farmer wanted it basically we need a nine foot gate but he wants it to overlap the post a little bit so we decided to make it over nine feet he said we can go anywhere from like nine foot four to nine foot six and i think that's where i'm at right now from OD to OD of hinge connection. There you go. Just over nine foot four. And that'll work. It'll hook into his post on the one side. And it'll hit the post on the other side. And then I gave him a, a quick latch. That slips into there. And an override safety where you can chain it so the gate is done 
We just need to let it cool. And I don't know, more than likely I'll end up at his place installing the sucker because this particular neighbor, outside of being a bit of a school teacher, well, he's a retired school teacher, he, he will knowingly admit that he don't know nothing about uh, installing gates or building crowl or anything like that. So I'll probably end up over there installing the gate for him. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. We'll bring you back here in a little bit. Alrighty, guys. And looks like 93 and... I'm going to make it 93 and an eighth. If I have to trim it a little, I will. What are we doing? So this windbreak frame, and this is how we build them now. We haven't changed them much yet, uh, other than the fact that instead of 30 feet long, they're 24. But this one's getting a bull rail on it. This one's getting a bull rail, and that one out there is getting a bull rail. And so, 93 and an eighth. So with the bull rail, if that'll stay there, And I'm cutting it on the line. Come on, we cracked you bastard. That's it, there we go. Good, good. I got one cut and we gotta press the ends. So we'll get our steel cut. And then we'll start welding these into place. The gate that we made, we took it to the neighbors and we had to install. And I was halfway expecting that because like I said earlier, he's not much of a fixture repair kind of guy. Yeah. There we go. So, yeah, we went and got that installed. Went for a little bit of a backwoods country tour, CP and I. Grabbed our mail, came home, had lunch. Here we are, four o'clock in the afternoon. We're back in the shop, finally. So, time flies when you're having fun, eh? Anyway, I'll get these cut and I'll bring you guys back later. It's new. You can't do a video. I am. You can't. Why? Because, just because. <laughs> she doesn't want to see her fuck up. What? Huh? She doesn't want to see her fuck up on video. No fuck up on my end. You sure? That's a BP. Oh, Jesus, listen to this. Alrighty guys, so this is what I mean by a bull rail. I generally put them at three feet from the ground up or three foot six, which basically means it goes right below or right above your two by six plank. Uh, so yeah, we gotta install our two by six planks, bottom and top, and then we could start hammering some freaking slabs on. Woohoo! I guess I gotta throw some plank down, huh? Did you dig out your saw by chance? Well, I was fucking cutting the steel and welding it in while you were there playing with the. You were. Somebody can't get organized. You were. Oh, really? You were playing with the dog, bouncing around trying to dance with Moki Dog there.
Where's your saw? Or are we just gonna use a skill? It's only two fucking wind are you breaks. Screw up cutting it? Probably. Because you're gonna be measuring and you'll give me the measurements wrong. <laughs> okay, I'll throw some boards down. Bring you back in a bit, boys and girls. Well, we could try it. Alrighty, guys, well, here it is. The problem is these slabs are eight foot six. They're not eight foot. So I gotta cut six inches off. My windbreaks are built for an eight, an actual eight foot slab. You could run them just above the top rail. Go to the other side, show you. Okay. So you could run them just above the top rail, right there, and they would end up being like that on the bottom. But in this case, because they're a little bit longer, they're eight foot six, it blocks our, even if those were right down on the ground, it would still restrict our lift area. So I got to cut one, uh, three, five, six, seven, eight. I got to cut nine boards up there in the lift cradle area. But that gives you an idea of what these bastards will look like when we're done. Horses are fighting out there, squealing with each other. And that's that side. Alrighty, I'll let you go. We'll talk to you later. Alrighty, guys, how the hell are you doing this morning? <coughs> oh, shit. That shit stinks. She's dangerous shit. That smoke that's coming out of there, it'll kill you. I'm telling you, it'll kill you. Anyways windbreak we did last night we just left it in here overnight and i drug it out this morning so that's what she looks like and if you remember that bull rail is just under the two by six the lower two by six uh plate this one, we're going to try something different. This will be the first time I've ever done it this way. <coughs> we're going to mount it on the side. In line with this, so to speak, right here. All the way down. It'll be mounted on the outside edge right here. We're going to try that. Just see how it works that way. Our bulls are no different than anybody else's bulls. When they get wrestling around and whatnot, they're nasty bastards. So, uh, yeah. She's kind of smoky. That goddamn friggin' lined shit. Anyway, CP and I will get this mounted up here and uh, I'll bring you guys back after. So, that's how the bull rail is going to be on this one. You guys tell me what you think. You think this is a better idea? Having it on the outside edge, right in line with that lower plank? Might be. Pain in the ass getting the plank on. Because uh, you got to wiggle it in between, just the way we do it. I don't like putting them on the outside edge. On this side, I like having them set inside. It just makes it a lot smoother all the way down. A lot neater. Anywho. I need help. Off the phone. Off the phone, you need help? Mm -hmm. Okay, talk to you guys later. Alrighty, guys. Well, there's 
Another one done. Um, downside or upside to putting this bull rail right in line with that plank is you don't need to bend these nails over. We always bend the nails over on this lower plank so that animals can't get cut by the nails. But with that on there, they should never, never get hit by those nails. Yeah, it's the downside. By bending the nails, it helps hold the the wind boards on. You want me to bend them a little bit? I could. The ones that we could get to, I guess we could. Just not all the way. Otherwise, you can't change the board. Yeah, changing the board would be a biatch. Unless we say screw it and bend the ones on the top. Just saying. Just saying. But yeah. And the nails that I got this time, the framing nails, they were a little cheaper, but they're not twisted like this. They're smoothies. I don't know if that's gonna make a big difference or not. We'll find out soon enough as time goes on, right? Anywho, that's windbreak number two. Talk to you later. I'm going to be on camera. So when we're done, can you email me those pictures? Brian and I, you need to take pictures because I'm strapped. <laughs> and my phone is underneath. Take pictures of his x-rays. Take pictures of the x-rays. Okay. Picture. So, if you guys are all wondering what the heck is going on here, Tucker here has had a lameness issue for going on four or five years for us. Uh, he's not stretching out. He, uh, and lots of our veterinar or veterinarians, our uh, farriers, the guys that were coming in were all telling us, well, he's just too fat and too heavy for his front legs. So we went with that, but now we're thinking he might have navicular. All righty, guys. Well, back in here now. The vet is gone. So, our worst fears were, like I was saying earlier in that quick little, excuse me, clip with Tucker, four or five years ago, he was starting to come up lame every once in a while. And all of our farriers, and we've had lots, and I never felt that any of them were any fucking good. But anyways, they were all saying, well, he's just too fat for his front front legs okay well after you've been told that for so many times you kind of just go with it well this year with uh lauren coming over and riding him he actually lost a pile of weight and he's still lame as fuck okay something's wrong right so we had we had a vet come out that did on-farm x-rays. And yes, our biggest fears were confirmed. Tucker's got navicular in the one leg. Which really sucks, but... And it's not 
really curable. You can somewhat treat for it, but it's not curable. So we just got to treat for it. Anyway, we're going to, we got to fit up the rest of this windbreak that I started. Get my flat bars and angle irons on. And then go to town and start welding like a banshee. Excuse me, yawning here. And so I'm going to let you guys go while I finish this off. And I'll bring you back a little later. <laughs> there it is, guys. Uh, basically two hours, hour and a half to two hours to weld this some bitch all together. But now I just gotta run and get some two by six and we can put the slabs on it. That's a tomorrow project. Anywho, have a good evening and fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. And CP will sit here and dance you later. Ha, 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 ha.